And you shall eat, and you shall labor, and you shall do this and do that. He also tell them about wearing head covering. You're going to sweat when you wear head coverings. Now I know how you ladies feel. Okay, so one of the way Yahweh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to show this to you. I'm going to get, how many are ready for meat and more meat and more meat? There I go again with the food. More meat of the word before we get into more esoteric. I want to take you a little deeper into the esoteric and the mystical, but I want to give you a little bit more meat. I'm sorry, I mean the meat of the word. I'm not, oh, be quiet. I'm not talking about meat. I'm talking about the meat of the word. Go back to Beratius, please. Go back to Beratius. Back to Beratius. Back to Benishi. Now we're going to have a little bit of fun. T the mystery of Teshuvah is what Yahweh does for you in the Messiah Yeshua. Okay, now I want you to look carefully in Bereshit chapter 1. Bereshit chapter 1, and I want you to find the name of Yahweh. Okay, please, I want you to look in Bereshit chapter 1, and I want you to tell me what verse is the name of Yahweh. Why not? Why not? Huh? We're not here yet. Exactly. Because we're not, we're not here. Only after man is made on what day? Day number six, after Adam and Chava are made, Yahweh for the first time says in verse 31, Yahweh said it is tov me'od, not good, Everything else was tov, but after Adam and Chava were created, everything he saw by Adam and Eve, and he said, "What? It is tov me'od, very good." Now look at ch uh, chapter two, verse one. Thus, or then, when thus, then, the heavens and the earth were complete. Look at me. So, what's another way to say heaven and earth are being complete? Creation is finished. Did anybody see Yahweh's name in chapter 1? It just refers to some Elohim. It doesn't know what Elohim. It just referred to a nebulous Elohim. The first time we see Yahweh's name appear is when? Right, but was it before or after creation? Thank you. And so we see, okay, now if we look here in, um, in, um, Baruch Hashem Yahweh, in, in Genesis, Bereshit 2, it speaks about what? It speaks about the home of Adam and Chava, verse 15. Elohim took Adam and put him in Gan Eden to work in garden. Where in chapter 1 do you see Gan Eden? Please find me the Garden of Eden in chapter 1. Let me know what verse you find it. Huh? So am I telling you Kabbalah or am I telling you Bible? When I talk, listen. Now in chapter 1, let's find Yahweh's name. It's not there. Now in chapter 1, let's find the Garden of Eden. Why not? The reason Yahweh doesn't put his name in chapter 1, it was not necessary. Isn't that what I've been telling you for two hours? The first time it becomes necessary is what? When we come into contact with the Garden, and we have S.A. Tan walking the earth in the garden, and we have Adam Vechava exposed to his dastardly deeds in the garden, now all of a sudden, Yahweh says, uh-oh, I better introduce my name, whosoever shall call on the name of Yahweh, because Adam and Eve are going to need my name. They're not going to be able to relate to the Ein Sof. They can't call on Ein Sof, because Ein Sof is both nothing and everything, so how can you call on the name of nothing? So he says, Adam, Eve, here's the lifesaver. You're going to need it. Take it. <laughs> Am I the only one enjoying this? He says, here's my name. Hold on to it. It's going to come in handy. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Now watch, verse 4. The birds of the heaven, the heavens and earth were completed. The earth and the day was created. Notice, in the day. As soon as the earth and the heavens were created, daytime kicks in. All right? And it talks, now verse 7. 
Yahweh Elohim formed man because man was going to need the name to be saved. Whoever calls in the name of Yahweh shall be saved. So that before creation there was no Yahweh in Leviticus 16. Isn't that interesting how that verse shows up in the Yom Kippur chapter? Before you guys came in, those of you who came in a little bit tardy, what were we reading in today's Parsha? Vayikra 16. Isn't it interesting that that scripture before Yahweh shows up in Vayikra 1630? Meaning, this whole rigmarole, this whole ritual of Yom HaKippurim is a, a, a moed, a rehearsal. It is a play, it is a type, it is a shadow. Listen, not only of what's going to happen one day when my son comes to the earth, but what happened in eternity past as a result of the Day of Atonement. If you see this thing all the way through and you're born again and you're washed in the blood of the Day of Atonement, I'll take you, bef not just before Yahweh on this earth, I'll take you back before Yahweh when there was only Ain Saul. And that's what's happened to us in Messiah. When we die, okay, not if, Ephraim 9, 27, there's appointed unto men once to die, then the judgment. When we have our appointment with death, when we keep our appointment with death, Yahweh is going to open a door and he's going to put us back in time before cause and effect, before time and space, and he is going to seat us with Yeshua at his right hand, and we will be one with Father Yahweh, Ainsof, because we call on the name of Yahshua, Yahweh saves Yahshua saves, Yahweh saves. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So we talk about going back, not Nahum. What is the Hebrew word Nahum? I'm sorry. I feel bad. I got caught. I hurt your feelings. It is the same root word of Nahash, snake, is the root, is the name for the snake, Nahash. So repentance cannot be Nahum, rather, it is uncomfortable. It, it is co There's no such thing as repentance without pain. Why does Yahweh tell us to afflict our souls on Yom Kippur? He wants to bring pain. What kind of pain? The pain that realizes that if you're going to follow me, he that does not forsake all cannot be my disciple. Luke 11, Matijahu 10. He that does not hate. Luke 11, read it. He that does not hate father, mother, brother, sister is not worthy of me. That doesn't mean go home and hate your family. It means your love for me should be so far exceeding and superior to your love for human beings that it's no contest. I said no contest. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So if you do not forsake all, meaning true teshuvah hurts. Because sin is comfortable. Moshe chose Israel rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Don't, don't, don't play the religious game in B'nai Yeshua Synagogue and tell me sin isn't fun. It's a lot of fun. If it wasn't fun, everybody wouldn't be doing it. But it's the pleasures of sin for a season. And don't tell me you can't do it. Yes, you can. You can do any sin the world does. But you'll also reap the effect of what you've caused. You're going to meet the Torah. And if you don't think there's a Torah, watch. All those church folks who think I can sin and not worry about it and I can confess my sins and get washed in the blood, guess what? You're about to find out. If you don't make Teshuvah and do a 180 degree turn, you're going to find out that the Torah is not nailed to the cross. Because the strength of sin is the Torah. Read 1 Corinthians 15. Sin has no strength to destroy you if there was no Torah. The very fact that sin still destroys lives is proof that the Torah hasn't been done away with. Hallelujah. Does this make sense? Hallelujah. Or should I wait till next Yom Kippur to do part three? No, do it now. Do it now. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Thank you, brother. Just do it. Okay, I will. Grow with me to your Miyahu 17. And by the way, when you find Yahweh's name in chapter one, let me know. Just give me a call. 954 blah 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 blah. Your Miyahu 17. Your Miyahu 17. Let's talk about Mikvah. Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, 17. Let's talk about mikvah. Now that the uh, Sunday system is pretty big on mikvah, right? And today we read in Vayikra 16 that the Kohen Hagadol had to do mikvah for himself and before he could enter the Holy of 
the, the Ohel Moe, the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and of course, ultimately, the Kadosh HaKadoshim. Yirmiyahu 17, 13. Now watch this. Why do we do, why did the Kohen Hagadol have to do mikvah on Yom HaKippurim, other than to purify himself symbolically? Hello? Did we just read in Vayikra 16, what did the Kohen Hagadol do? He mikvahed himself before he entered the what? The Ohel Moe, to cleanse himself symbolically and purify himself in mikvah. When we say mikvah, what is the English word for mikvah? Baptism. Immersion, immersion, baptism. Correct. Why did he have to do that? Why do you have to do that? Why do, why do Sunday pastors tell us that when you get saved, you must be mikvah? Why? Are they right? Of course they're right. But why? Why are they right? Well, the, you know, Yeshua commanded it. That's not a reason. What is the reason that Yeshua commanded it? I mean, it is a reason. We want to obey him. But what is the reason behind the reason? Here it is. You're not gonna. You're gonna get. Any, you're talking about the mystery of Teshuvah, Part Two. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So when the film director cuts out that part and rips it out of the film. That's atonement. It never happened. Most of the things that are cut in studio never make the big screen. It never happened. What does Yahweh? Do? What does What does the film director do? He destroys it and takes the the effect of bad acting. He eliminates the cause and the effect, and so both the cause and the effect are eliminated, so that all those cuts in those movies, that's what atonement is. You realize that? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Yirmiyahu 17, 13. Ready? O Yahweh, the expectation, and the Hebrew word for expectation is? Right. Very good. Mikvah. O Yahweh, the mikvah of Israel. Look at me. What? What? Yahweh is called the baptism of Israel. So when all these church folks, well, I'm getting baptized. You know what they're saying? I'm Israel. But they don't even know they're saying there is. They don't know they're the other house of Israel yet. But when they're doing mikvah, they're saying, I am doing mikvah because it is Yahweh who is the mikvah of Israel. And if I'm going to do mikvah, the mikvah of Israel, then I must be Israel. But they don't know it yet. But every time a believer gets mikvah, do you know what they're saying? I'm buried with him in death, burial, and resurrection. Yes, 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 yes. That's the Peshat. But what is the believer saying on the esoteric, the sod level? I'm Israel. Every time your Christian brother or sister goes down into the tank, they're saying they're Israel, but they don't know it. <laughs> Are we on? Are we on? Because it says Yahweh is the baptism of Israel. So when someone is mikvah in the Pashat, in the plain, simple, first level of Hebraic interpretation, what are they doing? I'm, I'm identifying with Yeshua's death, burial, and resurrection. That's a no-brainer, Romans chapter 6. No-brainer. But now, what's, what's, what do we need to get deep into the word when we say if Yahweh is the mikvah of Israel and mikvah was a Israelite thing before it was a Sunday thing, then if I'm doing mikvah, I am proclaiming that I am Israel, but I'm so lost that I don't know that I'm Israel and I need some place like the Miami Beach Israel Revival to teach me, show me, instruct me, and guide me in the fact that I am Israel. Hallelujah. All who forsake me are put to shame. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken Yahweh, the fountain of Mayim Chaim. Heal me, O Yahweh, and I am healed. Save me so that I am saved. For you are Tehilati. Yahweh is my praise. Tehilati. Tehila. Tehilati. My praise. My praise. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Yahweh is not only my praise. Yahweh is my mikvah. When, when the high priest was told to mikvah himself, he was, he was listen, mikvahing himself in Yeshua, the hope of Israel. What is translated as hope or expectation 
can either be, what is the, what is the Hebrew word, norm, normative Hebrew word for hope? Front row student? Tikva. The Israeli national anthem. So the normative word for hope is tikva. But here, the word hope is not translated tikva, it's translated mikvah. Yeah, uh, Yerim Yahu 1713. What well, Yahweh is saying, listen, and the reason Aharon and all the Kohanim HaGdolim through all the centuries had to make for themselves before they entered the Ohol Mohen to do the sacrifice and the scapegoat and the whole rigmarole that we read in our Parsha is because, listen, is because they were in essence saying, Yahweh, this is nice, you're forgiving us, you're covering our sins. What does atonement mean? Covering, covering, not a removal, no. but a covering, a kofar, a covering. That's nice, but I'm going to have to go past this mercy seat. I'm going to have to go past the Ark of the Covenant. I'm going to have to go back to the womb. So he, the high priest was mikvah as an expression that I haven't gone back to the womb. Hallelujah. What's another way of saying going back to the womb? Born again. Born again. But see, but unlike the Western Gentile Christianity, Yahweh does not say go back to the womb of your mother because we learned today and last week in Tehillim 51, I was shaped in iniquity. Behold, in sin did my mother conceive me. So Yeshua couldn't have been... <laughs> so Yeshua couldn't have been talking about going back to your mother's womb because the only thing in your mother's womb is the same thing that's in your body. Sin dwelleth in my flesh. That is, Romans 7, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So what's it, what, if you take your flesh and go back to your mama's flesh, now you've got two pieces of sinful flesh hooked together by an amniotic sac. whoop de do. Not far enough. And to prove that you and your mama are sinners, you've got the same umbilical cord. Mama, what did you do to me? <laughs> a, you didn't ask my permission. B, you hooked me up in your sin. Symbolic of this umbilical cord. And even if I cut it, I'm stuck. I got the same juice in me that you had in you. And it ain't set apart peanut juice either. It's the, it's the juice of Adam and Chava. The tainted seed of Adam and Chava. So when the when when Yahshua tells his followers to do mikvah, he's saying you've got to have hope in the womb. See, my hope is not in going to shul. My hope is not in being Israel. My hope is not in wearing a head covering so I could look like all the other pretty young ladies. My hope is in going back to the womb. What womb? The father. The father. When Yeshua said, Nicodemus, come here, you big rabbi. Let me humble you a little bit. Sit down. A man must be born again. Oh, how can that be, rabbi? Can I go back to the mother's womb? Yeshua said, hey, vey. I'm not talking about going back. I'm talking about going back to the womb of the father where I came from. Before I spoke you into existence. That's what it means to be born again. To find a way back to Eden. Right? Wrong. Oh, not Eden. Ain't so. Before you. To find the way back to the womb that has no corruption, that has no taint of sin, that has no taint of degradation, that has no taint of corruptibility, that has no taint of, of, of any leaven whatsoever. I've, we've got to find a way back to that womb. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to that womb but by me. You, 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 you can get to the steeple place. And you can get to the synagogue place. And you can buy your tickets for Yom Kippur and say, look, 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 I'm Jewish. I got tickets. I got tickets. I got tickets. I'm going to heaven. Why do you go to heaven? Because I got tickets. <laughs> and they're hard to get. Very hard to get. Because in the shul, you can't go in. Everybody gets so religiously concerned on Yom Kippur that unless you've got a ticket, you can't get in. Hello? So when Yeshua said, be born again, P.S., be mikvah, you know what he's saying? Same thing. 
Go back to the womb of the Father. I'll take you there because you will know how to get there. And when you're mikvah, that says to me that you want, you're showing the world that Yahweh is your ticket back to the womb that predates creation. What womb? The womb of Ainsof. The womb of Ainsof. But if you don't know what Ainsof, so when Yahweh, what, isn't that interesting that in today's Parsha, in Vayikra 1630, that scripture suddenly shows up. That you are to bring this atonement before Yahweh, meaning to the womb of Ainsof, hello? Before, there, before Yahweh's name was Yahweh, before Yahweh was Yahweh. Now that may sound like heresy, especially to us folks like us who love the true name. Hello? But I've had to unlearn a lot of the error. What was Yahweh called before he was known as Yahweh? What was, his, what was he known as before Yahweh? Not really. We call him Ainsof because we don't know what to call him. Thank you. You know why Proverbs 30 verse 4 is a riddle? Because the Ainsof has no name. And the one who does have a name, Judah doesn't know his name. So Proverbs 34 is a double whammy. Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? I don't know. Ainsof, he's got no name. Right on. And what is his son's name? I don't know. Right. So Jewish Israel strikes out on both accounts. They don't know the Ainsof. And because he has no name, what is his name? That's why it's a riddle. What is a parable, a proverb? It's a riddle. What a shock when people get to heaven and they're looking to meet Jehovah and they don't find Jehovah and they also don't find Yahweh, they find the Ainsof. Hello? We call on the name of Yahweh to get the attention of the Ainsof. But when we get to heaven, he's not going to say, Good morning, Yahweh's hideaway. When we get to heaven, we're not going to see a sign that says, Good morning, campers. I'm your, I'm your Yahweh, and welcome to my holiday camp. We're going to be so enamored with the Ainsof. And so to be born again means in this life to trust in the one who could bring you back to the womb of Ainsof. And what is the kingdom? What is the whole thing about kingdom? Malchut. The kingdom is Malchut. So the womb of the Ainsof birth his children for the Malchut. And what does? The Yisod, the foundation of Yahweh. Who is the foundation? Yeshua, the middle column of the Sephirotic tree. He births, through his seed, he births children for the Malchut. Okay, back to Yirmiyahu 1713. Oh Yahweh, this is about a 10 tape day we're going to have today. The expectation, the hope of Yisra, El, all who forsake you, uh, shall be what? Put to disgrace, shame, and they shall have, um, they shall be written in the earth. Look at me. Who is, who's ever read John chapter 8? Yes. Have you ever read John chapter, Abraham? Have you ever read John chapter 8? Yes. Juan, capitulo 8. Who's ever read Yohanan chapter 8? So, now remember, here's another religious teaching. The law didn't look up and, you know, they caught the women in adultery and he was writing, uh, he was writing all their sins in the earth, right? Right? Remember? Mm -hmm. He's writing wrong. It says here he was fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. That day he was writing their names in the earth. Mm -hmm. All the names who forsook him, the baptism or the mikvah or the hope of Israel, he wasn't writing down their sins, he was writing down their names in the earth as a fulfillment of Jeremiah 17. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. This was a prophecy in John 8 that he was fulfilling directly out of Jeremiah 17. 3. Mm -hmm. he was, he, they didn't want to be written in the Lamb's book of life, no problem. He wrote their names in the earth because they forsook the fountain of living water as it is written, Yohanan 7, 37 through 40. He that is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink, for it is written out of his innermost belly shall flow rivers of living water. You don't want the living water? No problem. I'll put you to shame by publicly writing down your name in the earth since you didn't count yourself worthy of having your name written in the Lamb's book of life, somebody. Hallelujah. So Yohanan 8 is a fulfillment of those who forsook the mikvah of Israel. The hope and the baptism of Israel. We see here, Yahweh is the ritual cleansing for Israel. As we immerse ourselves, listen, and disappear under the mikvah, the water, just like the Kohen HaGadol, 
in Vayikra 16, it is though we were drowned, listen, and a new person emerges from the mikvah of Moshiach. We become like newborn babes having no past. How much of a past does a baby have? We become like newborn babes that have no past. We become prepared like a maiden bride to enter the chuppah, the canopy, the marriage canopy, with the bridegroom. But mikvah without teshuva is dead works. Amen? Mikvah without teshuva is dead works. Teshuva, listen, is a key, is the key to atonement. Atonement causes forgiveness, listen, and it is the natural outcome in returning to the point of origin. I'll say that again. Atonement causes forgiveness. Forgiveness is the outcome in agreeing to return to the point of origin. Does that make sense? What's the point of origin? Mom's womb? No. The womb of Malchut. Do you understand? The womb of the kingdom. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. The womb of Ainsof. Teshuvah causes a new beginning. How? By rewriting cosmic history. Listen, when you agree to make Teshuvah, and what is the book of turns? I, I, I would be safe to rename the Torah the book of turns. Every area in your life that you and I are falling short, every area of your life that you and I are missing it, all we got to do is go to the Torah and find out how to make a turn. And Teshuvah means to what? Turn back. Tov. So if Teshuvah causes a new beginning, and the new beginning is the womb of Ainsof, before cause and effect, before Torah, before Satan, then I and you can choose, listen, to rewrite our history and the history of the world around us. I'm telling you what happened when you got saved. You rewrote your history, Yahweh put you in the womb of the Ainsof, so that by making teshuva or repentance, you are rewriting the world and the history of your past so that you have no past. You can be grasping this? The mystery of teshuva is not to change your past or change your future. It is to completely rewrite it and hide it so you have no past, you have no present, you have no future, you are not subject to the laws of cause and effect. You're in him. In him. You in him, he in us, we in him, him in us. That's what all that stuff was about. My father used to make fun of me all the time. He wouldn't believe in the messianic faith. Why? He and him, him and her, him and whom, him and about, and he used to sit there and make fun of me. Okay? I mean, he used to get so, so degrading, I didn't want to go into it. I think I've shared this with you several times. The Father, the Son, and the Ghost are three persons, like, like supposedly like Christianity teaches it, right? Okay, so here is my Father's logic. If you have the Father, the Son, and the Ghost, i.e., how many persons? Three, we know that's not true, but regardless, so here my Father would make fun of me. And he was right in a way, but he was pervertedly right. He would say, how can three go in to marry Miriam and, and, and have her conceive, and only one came out? He said, what happened to the father and the ghost? You get how a warped mind thinks? Three impregnated her. Since the father and the son and the ghost are all the same, right? This is a Jewish mind, an unregenerated Jewish mind. Three had intercourse with Mary. One came out, two got lost. Now, how do you answer that? You don't. There's no way to answer that. Hello? The only way to answer that is to pray for people like that, that Yahweh would open their mind and reveal. <laughs> I mean, how, how would you answer that? Three went in, one came out. What happened to the other two? Since they're all in all, and each, and each one is in each other. Which, which just shows you how ridiculous the concept of three persons is. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Three persons. Mm -hmm. you, mean, you mean idolatry? No, brother. This is westernized idolatry. Don't call it idolatry. Well, wait a second. Three persons. Father, Son, and Holy. 
Yeah, but don't call that, I'm not an idolater. I, I'm born again, really. So you mean, it's, it's westernized idolatry. It's three manifestations of the one Yahweh. See, what Avi teaches, and he's right. Remember how Avi puts this? Instead of, instead of three persons, right, one substance, hello? It's three substances of one person. <laughs> okay, the, completely reversed. Instead of three persons all from the same substance, it's three substances emanating from one person. That's a little bit easier to swallow. And it's a little bit more in line with the Shema. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I'm still getting religion. No matter how much I teach that, no matter how much you're still going to get people think you're wrong. Because they're not willing to have their minds read. Even right now, people think that. And I don't have the time to get into a Trinity teaching right now. It's an entirely different teaching for another time. Okay, now we're going to get deeper. Turn to your neighbor and say deeper. Matter of fact, I'm so on fire now, I'm going to let anybody preach. Bad map. Now, I'll stay flexible. I'll stay flexible. Okay. Bear, um, please go with me to... All right. While we're turning to Bereshit 3.9, Bereshit 3.9, Genesis 3.9, while we're turning there, the issue comes up that if we are willing to be mikvah on earth as a type of what the Father has done. is not mikvah? Doesn't the church teach that, that mikvah is a type, right, of being immersed into Yeshua? What they don't understand is not only is it being immersed in the Pashat, the first level of Hebraic interpretation, into Yeshua, in the Sod, it is being immersed into the womb of the Father where we will spend eternity. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So it's in, in the Sod, in the mystic, esoteric, it is not just a mikvah of Yesh into Yeshua, because who is the mikvah of Israel? Yahweh, Yahweh is the mikvah of Israel. Amen? But when we when we, we go into that mikvah, where do we wind up? In the womb. You must be born again. Can't go back to mom's womb because it's filthy with sin. I respect and love my mother and reverence her, but I'll tell you what, we are all children of Adam. I'm going to have to find a different womb to be born in. Are you getting this? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. May your tribe increase. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Um, so the real issue is not anymore a list of sins. Listen. The real question is, where are you? Where are you? Where are you going? Do you hear his voice? If you hear his voice, are you willing to hide? Bereshus 3.9, Yahweh Elohim called to Adam in the garden. You've got to go past, go further back to the point of origin, primordial origin, back to the laws, beyond the laws of cause and effect, because here are the laws of cause and effect. Bereshus 3.9.